Hang in there, Leland. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again later tonight for another edition of On Balance at 7, 6 Central. New details this morning about Israel agreeing to pause bombardments each day for a few hours. This as the IDF claims to have killed a number of top Hamas commanders. There will be uh, two humanitarian corridors allowing people to flee the areas of hostilities in the northern part of Gaza. Israel says 80,000 people moved south on Thursday and tens of thousands more expected to flee today. We're live in Tel Aviv. And a veterinarian on a mission to rescue and reunite pets with their humans amid the chaos of war in the Middle East. Plus, the high-end brothel bust that stretches from the Beltway to Boston and beyond. The suspects and the extensive client list that the Justice Department says includes politicians, military officers, high-tech executives, and many more. Will names be revealed? And will those being trafficked be rescued? and honoring the life and legacy of Apollo astronaut Frank Borman. From his historic 1968 flight to circle the moon, paving the way for all the space marvels today, NASA honors one of the legends of American space exploration. Caffeine and booze, the mixture that so many have blamed for ruining a good night's sleep, the surprising results of a new study that looks at the combination of a cup of coffee and that glass of wine right before bed. So I'm guessing espresso martinis are off the <laughs> off the menu. If that's the case, if that's the for case tonight. right now, yeah, exactly, sure. <laughs> and for this weekend, hey, happy Friday, everybody, from our news station headquarters in America's heartland. It's time for news for all America. Thanks for joining us, Adrian Bankert has the day off. I'm Nick Smith. Yeah, a lot to get to this morning on your Friday, so let's get straight to it. Israel is now agreeing to four-hour daily pauses in the Gaza fighting. The Biden administration says it has secured a second pathway for civilians to flee the fighting and the warfare. Robert Sherman is live in Tel Aviv with the latest. Plus, there's been a rise in hate crimes around the United States since the start of the war between Hamas and Israel. A 200% rise in New York City alone. Now officers are keeping watch over synagogues and mosques as both have been targeted. Dre Clark is live with those details. And three people are arrested in a high-end brothel network tied to politicians. You've got military officers, many others. Will those names of the alleged Johns be made public and are more arrests ahead? Tom Dempsey has that story in just a few minutes. But first, let's begin here. New revelations from the Pentagon this morning. It is confirming four new attacks on U.S. bases by Iranian-backed groups in the Middle East. Those attacks happening after the United States' second round of defensive airstrikes on Iranian facilities in Syria. The Pentagon saying the U.S. has been attacked 46 times in separate drone and rocket attacks over the past three weeks. That is 24 attacks in Iraq, 22 in Syria, leaving 56 troops with minor injuries. Reminding everyone that our troops remain in constant danger abroad. Absolutely. Absolutely. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie is expected to visit Israel on Sunday. He's the first Republican presidential candidate to travel there since the war started. Mr. Christie says he will meet with families of people kidnapped by Hamas, as well as Israel Defense Force soldiers and Israeli government officials. FBI Director Christopher Wray says the process of choosing the agency's new headquarters location was tainted and the decision to move to Maryland should be reversed. Wray says there were conflicts of interest the government's General Services Administration didn't address. Virginia officials are also fighting back because a panel originally chose Springfield, Virginia. The current FBI building in downtown Washington also needs to be repaired. And we're now learning more about what one COVID-19 relief fund fraudster did with the money he stole. According to the Associated Press, Florida businessman Patrick Parker used nearly $8 million to buy his private island near Mexico. He was sentenced in January to five and a half years in federal prison. He's just one of thousands who potentially plundered more than $280 billion in federal COVID-19 aid. Another $123 billion was wasted 
or misspent. To Israel now, where the Biden administration says Israel Defense Forces will pause military operations for four hours a day to let Palestinians escape that fighting. The CIA director is also said to be negotiating a longer humanitarian pause that could secure the release of a dozen hostages being held by Hamas. It's a big step forward, but Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says for now, pauses will be scattered and fighting will continue in other areas. Netanyahu also adding Israel does not intend to occupy Gaza at the end of its war, saying instead it must be demilitarized, de-radicalized, and rebuilt. And it's been another day of heavy bombings in Gaza. A number of strikes have been reported at or at least near hospitals. And an overnight raid by Israeli forces in the occupied West Bank has resulted in a number of deaths, dozens of arrests. Robert Sherman is with us now for more on that. And also a warning from Iran. Robert, what are we learning? Good morning to you all. We're seeing the fighting in Gaza taking place at what the Israelis are calling Hamas's military quarter. This is what they describe as being the hub of Hamas's military and intelligence operations there, where they're finding all kinds of tunnels, military and weapons caches all over the place. But this is effectively at the heart of Gaza City, which is where we're seeing the most intense of that fighting taking place. Meanwhile, we've seen the Israelis agree to four hour pauses in the middle of the day. This, according to the White House, which the Israelis will have starting today. We have seen some of these humanitarian pauses taking place in the middle of the day over the last couple of days. But now a big decision here is one, these are going to be formalized and set in stone for four hours a day. And second, there's going to be two humanitarian corridors open at once. If the last couple of days are any indication of what we've been seeing here, tens of thousands of people in North Gaza have been fleeing that area and flowing south through the, some of those corridors there, which the Israelis say is indicative of Hamas losing control over the northern Gaza Strip. And meanwhile, we're also seeing this morning the Israelis being put on their heels after they've seen attacks coming from the south. Houthi fighters in Yemen took responsibility for downing a U.S. drone. Now they say they've carried out more strikes on Israel. Listen to this. Our military forces, with the help of God, have fired a batch of ballistic missiles at different sensitive Israeli targets south of the occupied lands, including military targets. And with God's help, the operation achieved its objective successfully and led to direct casualties despite the enemy's discretion about it. The Yemeni military force will continue its military operations, defending the tyranny that Palestinian people are subjected to. The Israelis say that they intercepted a surface-to-surface -surface missile over the Red Sea that did not make impact and that also a UAV that crashed in Israel did not cause any casualties there. But still, a lot of people on guard with what's going on around the region today. Adding to the fact, Iran's foreign minister making this ominous statement, saying that it is, quote-unquote, inevitable that the Hamas-Israeli war expands due to what's going on in Gaza at this hour. Nick. Robert Sherman, live for us this morning. Robert, thank you. The Israel-Hamas war continues to have impacts here at home. As tensions rise, we're beginning to see a spike in hate crimes against both the Jewish and Muslim communities across the country. Our Dre Clark joins us now live from New York with this disturbing trend. Dre, it has so many people on edge. Yeah, Nick, good morning. The NYPD has reassigned officers to keep very close watch over synagogues and mosques as both have been targeted since the war between Hamas and Israel began uh, a month ago. Throughout the city, there have been acts of violence or vandalism involving graffiti being sprayed across Jewish-owned businesses and window smash, and Muslims being reported attacked because they were wearing pro-Palestinian T-shirts or carrying a Palestinian flag. The NYPD says there is no doubt the war happening in the Middle East is fueling this hate because up until last month, the number of racially infused attacks of vandalism were way down. In the most diverse city in America, a surge of hate is keeping New York City police busy. This man charged with vandalizing three synagogues on Manhattan's Upper East Side. In Brooklyn, surveillance video showing two men asking a 14-year-old kid if he's Jewish and then shoving him to the ground. I have not witnessed in my entire uh, time in the city the level of just outward hate that I'm seeing. 
The NYPD reports the city experienced a 214% increase in hate crimes against Jewish people in October. There were 101 reported hate crimes, including 69 targeting Jews. In October 2022, there were 45 hate crimes, with 22 targeting Jews. Also last month, the NYPD reporting there were eight anti-Muslim hate crimes, up from zero reported in 2022. The Israel-Hamas war fueling the fury. Very unfortunate amount of hate being expressed by people who are using what's going on in the Middle East really to express their bias towards certain communities. In Southern California, 69-year-old Paul Kessler, a Jewish man, died after a confrontation with a pro-Palestinian demonstrator. It hasn't really sunk into me yet that a man died right there. Near Chicago, this 74-year-old man was charged with murder after he fatally stabbed a six-year-old Palestinian boy 26 times and attacked the boy's mother. Police say he targeted the family because they're Muslim. Elsewhere across the country, schools, colleges, and universities are also on high alert, hiring extra security to keep students safe. At Cornell University, Patrick Dye was arrested after he threatened to shoot Jewish students on campus using an assault rifle. The advice from law enforcement, take every threat serious and contact police right away. The Anti-Defamation League says nationally, nationwide, there has been a 388 percent increase uh, in attacks or acts of anti-Semitism. And sadly, those numbers may continue to go up until the war comes to an end. Marquis? Yeah, a lot of facilities, a lot of communities, families uh, feeling the need to be vigilant right now, keep their head on a swivel, unfortunately. Drake Clark, thanks so much. Uh, let's get to politics this morning. Growing questions today over whether or not West Virginia Democratic Senator Joe Manchin is moving closer and closer to a third-party presidential run. This after announcing he will not be seeking re-election to the Senate, but hinted at some other plans. Take a listen. What I will be doing is traveling the country and speaking out to see if there is an interest in creating a movement to mobilize the middle. We need to take back America and not let this divisive hatred further pull us apart. Hmm. So what does it all mean? Let's bring in White House columnist for The Hill, our good friend Niall Stanage. Niall, happy Friday to you. I guess it wasn't totally unexpected that he was going to step down, but still, it's always somewhat stunning to hear the news, you know, when somebody says they're resigning, especially with such a big name. We know that the senator, you know, was expected to face this uphill battle in keeping his seat in West Virginia, which former President Trump won by 39 points back in 2020. What do you think ultimately caused him to pull out and were his fellow Democrats caught off guard? I think what ultimately caused him to pull out is the po probability rather than possibility that he was going to lose that re-election bid. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the fact of former President Trump having won his state by so much in 2020. And then in addition to that, we had a poll just last month showing Jim Justice, the Republican governor of West Virginia, leading Senator Manchin by 13 points. So, and to make a long story short, Marky, I think the senator is really uh, jumping before he was pushed by the governor, uh, by the voters, excuse me, of yeah. West Virginia. Yeah, and let's look, you know, ahead now, uh, and maybe some more political ambitions he could have uh, in his mind, his back pocket. There's this group that's actually pushing for Manchin to team up with Mitt Romney for a third-party presidential bid under the No Labels movement. That draft committee, I know, is expected to launch sometime next week, but sources are saying the two senators haven't actually signed on to this just yet. What do you think the likelihood uh, of that happening is and, and seeing that come to fruition? So the draft effort, as I understand it, is slightly different from the No Labels effort. But Mitt Romney has said he has no interest in running for president or vice president in any capacity. Now, Senator Manchin is clearly leaving the door much more wide open to that. This phrase that he has used several times in the last 24 hours about mobilizing the middle would suggest that he is interested in that kind of a run. My own view is that the chances of such a successful run in that scenario are very, very slim. I don't believe there's any groundswell really for Joe Manchin for president, but he seems to at least be shaping up with that as a possibility. And when you talk about that being, you know, a, a slim success and, and might not, you know, um, be fruitful for him, if you will, do you mean now or even in the future? 
I don't see that there is a large number of Americans who are desperate to have Joe Manchin as president, which is what you need if you want to run a successful third party bid. I think the senator is someone who is useful at times to the Republican Party because he's such a centrist uh, Democrat. And obviously he's useful sometimes to the Democrats when he votes along with them. But that's a different thing from suggesting that there's this huge body of voters out there who are enthused about the idea of making um, a conservative Democrat their president. Yeah, we'll see where he takes this, because I have a hard time believing he's just going to ride into the sunset, spend time with family and grandkids. How cautiously, Niall, will Democrats have to walk in pushing back against Manchin's possible presidential bid when he still holds a key vote in the Senate? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, obviously, his support is very important to any hopes that Democrats have of passing legislation or, for that matter, stopping Republican legislation. So they do have to be a little bit cautious. It was notable, I think, Marky, that President Biden issued a very warm statement just after the senator made his announcement talking about continuing to work together for the good of the American people and so forth. So the president obviously not taking any kind of confrontational approach that might alienate Senator Manchin, kind of keeping him on board for the moment. Okay, we will uh, stay on top of this one and see where his uh, future travels that he teased ahead, <laughs> where those travels take him. Niall Stanage, thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Nick. Yep. Marky, thank, thank you. Now to a shocking story of a prostitution network allegedly involving powerful people like high-level executives and elected officials. The Justice Department announcing charges for three people accused of operating, quote, sophisticated high-end brothels near Boston and Washington, D.C. The DOJ alleging the clientele included not just elected officials, but also military officers, government contractors with cl security clearances. Our Tom Dinsey has more from Washington. Tom. Hey, good morning, Nick. Yeah, this morning, federal investigators described this case as active and ongoing with the people charged facing accusations of running a high-end brothel network whose clientele included, among other professions, politicians, a part of that clientele, and where interested people had to provide uh, work information and even some references. So far, the uh, investigators have charged three people in connection to this case. But according to the Department of Justice, this high-end brothel network ran, the, uh, ran out of the Boston area and Northern Virginia, specifically Cambridge and Watertown, Massachusetts, and Fairfax and Tysons in Virginia. Investigators saying the three people facing charges coordinated air travel and other transportation for prostitutes. The services took place in rented high-end apartments and the defendants advertised on two different websites offering appointment times and information about the women available. Investigators saying the services cost between $350 and $600 an hour. The U.S. attorney overseeing this investigation describing a wide range of people who engage with the business saying, quote, they are doctors, they are lawyers, they are accountants, they are elected officials, they are executives of high-tech companies and pharmaceutical companies, they are military officers, government contractors, professors, scientists, they are the men who fuel this commercial sex ring. Now, the three people charged in this federal investigation now face the possibility of spending up to 20 years behind bars as well as fines of up to a quarter million dollars. I'm sure a lot of our viewers at home are wondering who specifically the politicians could be that are tied to this investigation, but the identities of the clientele still remain a mystery this morning, guys. Tom, I was just speaking with our executive producer about this. This is one of those stories we know we will need to follow because we've seen this take down many a politician in the past. Tom, thank you so much. Yeah, quite a little black book there. We'll oh, see yes, if uh, that comes to light. Well, the mystery surrounding the suspect in the murder of a synagogue leader, we're going to touch on this one again. Our investigative reporter, Rich McHugh, digs into who the person might be, and police are keeping them under wraps. And one of NASA's best dies at age 95. The two missions he commanded that laid groundwork for the 1969 moon landing. I'm Captain Martha Lane Kinnett, the Ares Battery Commander here with 427 Field Artillery. Um, happy Veterans Day to all you veterans out there, and thank you so much for your service. The News Nation Republican primary debate, December 6th on News Nation. For over 25 years, Love Sack has been rewriting the rules of comfort. It's okay to change your style. Get messy. Get immersed. With Love Sack, 
you make the rules. Had enough? No, arthritis. Here, aspirin cream arthritis. Huh. Full prescription strength. Reduces inflammation. Thank the gods. Don't thank them too soon. Kick pain in the aspirin cream. At Consumer Cellular, you get the same exact coverage as the largest carriers for up to half the price. That's amazing. And great customer service based here in America. That's amazing. And no hidden fees, no contracts, and free activation. That's amazing. Hello? Barbara? Sorry, I was muted. That's amazing. I know, right? Ugh. Can you see that? <sighs> JP Morgan Wealth Management knows it's easy to get lost in investment research. Get help with JP Morgan Personal Advisors. Hey, David, ready to get started? Work with advisors who create a plan with you and help you find the right investments. So great getting to know you. Let's take a look at your new investment plan. Okay, great. This should have you moving in the right direction. Thanks, Jen. Get ongoing advice and manage your investments in the Chase Mobile app. My mental health was much better, but I struggled with uncontrollable movements called TD, tardive dyskinesia. TD can be caused by some mental health meds. And it's unlikely to improve without treatment. I felt like my movements were in the spotlight. Number one prescribed Ingresa is the only TD treatment for adults that's always one pill once daily. Ingresa 80 milligram is proven to reduce TD movements in 7 out of 10 people. People taking Ingresa can stay on most mental health meds. Ingresa can cause depression, suicidal thoughts, or actions in patients with Huntington's disease. Pay close attention to and call your doctor if you become depressed, have sudden changes in mood, behaviors, feelings, or have thoughts of suicide. Don't take Ingresa if you're allergic to its ingredients. Ingresa may cause serious side effects, including angioedema, potential heart rhythm problems, and abnormal movements. Report fevers, stiff muscles, or problems thinking as these may be life-threatening. Sleepiness is the most common side effect. It's nice. People focus more on me. Ask your doctor about number one prescribed once daily in Gressa. The fourth Thursday in November. It's the day our families come together. The day food is shared. The day America gives thanks. Today, that day takes on a deeper meaning. When the world seems broken, it's more important than ever to remember what we haven't lost to remember our values, and to remember who we are. Well, weeks after the killing of that synagogue leader in Detroit, the first break in the case has come. Absolutely. Police announcing they've made an arrest connection to Samantha Wall's death. Our Rich McHugh has details on who the man is and why they aren't releasing his identity. Hey, good morning. For a case that seemed to go cold for two and a half weeks, it now seems to be moving rather quickly. Police have taken into custody a suspect, and they've just put out new guidance. I'd like to, to read that exactly. At this time, the details of the investigation must remain confidential, including the name of the suspect. Investigators are at a critical juncture in this case and are working tirelessly towards bringing this matter to closure. Now, sources tell me this, this suspect that they've taken into custody is a former love interest of Samantha Wool. They won't say, his, say this person's name. I'm told it is also a male. I've spoken to former law enforcement in Detroit, former assistant chief of police there. What he tells me is very interesting. Take a look. Suspect was arrested in Kalamazoo, which is on the west side of the state. So he'll be transferred back to Detroit. Uh, and within 48 hours, he has to be arraigned. This individual may or may not be the actual killer. It could be someone who's complicit either before or after the fact. It just said a suspect in the case the release was very specific they said taken into custody not arrested why would that be i can arrest you on probable cause okay they didn't say he arrested him they didn't say they arrested him for the murder of they said he's a suspect in the case you got to wonder just exactly what they got and that's that's we're gonna find out in the next 48 hours now if they do charge this person we should know the identity as soon as they do this weekend by this weekend if they don't we may never know this person's identity and the mystery will continue, guys. I think there's so often a push for 
you know, from people in the community or members of the media to who is it we want the answers. Absolutely. But you always have to remember, they have a reason for keeping that under wraps for and the if integrity they felt of the case. they were a threat to the community, they would let us know more. Exactly. But I think that they need to protect the integrity of that investigation. Yeah, they know what they're doing, that's for sure. Um, okay, so we're all looking ahead to the weekend, what we're going to do, maybe what we're going to drink and, and eat. Well, wine before bed or coffee too late in the day even. Do you blame them for a bad night's sleep? What a new study says about an alcohol caffeine combo with a surprising effect on your rest. And the innovative strategy surgeons use to buy a man on life support more time. Mm. Also, let's take a quick check of the weather. Uh, let's talk about this high wind alerts for the northwest tomorrow with gusts up to 60 miles an hour. So hold on to your hats yeah. if you're in that part of the country. Also, the heat continues in the southeast with more record highs. Charlotte, North Carolina, breaking the record for a second day in a row. Look at those high 80s. Goodness. Washington, D.C. also getting into the 80s, breaking Thursday's record by three degrees. Wow. The Veterans Day weekend, you know, it's going to turn a little bit cooler as showers and storms move on in. Wet weather from the nation's capital to the Gulf Coast, also both today and tomorrow. Hey, I'm Staff Sergeant Christopher Alviar. I'm deployed with the uh, Task Force Tomahawk in the uh, Horn of Africa. I uh, just want to thank all my friends and family in Edmond, Oklahoma for their support. And I want to wish all the veterans out there a happy Veterans Day. Thank you all very much. Lactate is 100% real milk, just without the lactose. Delicious, too. Just ask my old friend Kevin. Nothing like enjoying a cold one while watching the game. Who's winning? We are, my friend. We are. I was stuck. Unresolved depression symptoms were in my way. I needed more from my antidepressant. Raylar helped give it a lift. Adding Raylar to an antidepressant is clinically proven to help relieve overall depression symptoms better than an antidepressant alone. And in Raylar clinical studies, most saw no substantial impact on weight. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke, report unusual changes in behavior or suicidal thoughts. Antidepressants can increase these in children and young adults. Report fever, stiff muscles, or confusion, as these may be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death, weight gain, and high cholesterol may occur. Movement dysfunction and restlessness are common side effects. Stomach and sleep issues, dizziness, increased appetite, and fatigue are also common. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. I didn't have to change my treatment. I just gave it a lift. Ask about Valar and learn how AbbVie can help you save. When it comes to your hair, ingredients matter. That's why Herbal Essences is packed with naturally derived plant ingredients you love. And none of the stuff you don't. Our sulfate-free collections smell incredible and leave your hair touchably soft and smooth. Herbal Essences. With the Freestyle Libre 2 system, know your glucose level and where it's headed. No finger sticks needed. Manage your diabetes with more confidence. Freestyle Libre 2. Try it for free at freestylelibre.us. Important announcement regarding the dangerous herbicide Paraquat. If you or someone you love has developed Parkinson's disease or Parkinson's-like symptoms after being exposed to Paraquat, call Saddle Rock Legal Group now. You may be eligible for substantial financial compensation. The dangerous chemical Paraquat is used as a commercial and agricultural herbicide spray. Many users were exposed to this toxic chemical through airborne contact with skin and clothing. Paraquat is found in many popular weed killers like Gramoxone. It is highly toxic. The Environmental Protection Agency classifies it as restricted use only, and it is banned in many countries worldwide. So if you or a loved one develop Parkinson's disease after working or living on a farm that used herbicides containing the deadly chemical Paraquat, Call Saddle Rock Legal Group today to see if you qualify for financial compensation. It only takes a few minutes and the call is completely free. Call to discuss your case now. Call 1-800-875-7711. That's 1-800-875-7711. News Nation is your home for the next Republican primary debate. The GOP presidential candidates will square off in a live primetime event at the University of Alabama. Roll Tide. The two-hour event will be moderated by Sirius XM's Megyn Kelly 
News Nation's own Elizabeth Vargas and the Washington Free Beacon's Ileana Johnson. Don't miss the News Nation Republican primary debate Wednesday, December 6th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 Central. And speaking of that next Republican primary debate, our Elizabeth Vargas spoke exclusively with Megyn Kelly, what she had to say about this major event. And we certainly are proud to host and to moderate that evening. Plus alcohol and caffeine, we've been talking about it, how that combo could impact your sleep. And it actually might surprise you. So uh, stay tuned for that story. And then one group is reuniting displaced Israelis with their furry friends. Uh, we know this has impacted a lot of pets too. Hear what inspired this really special mission. Those are always so Tear special. Jerkers. Absolutely. Mm. Now let's take a look at some of the other headlines you'll be talking about today. A jury awards more than $1.2 million to Robert De Niro's former personal assistant. Her name is Graham Chase Robinson. They also find that his production company is responsible for subjecting her to a toxic work environment and engaging in gender discrimination. Mr. De Niro agreed he had asked her to scratch his back at least twice and admitted to berating her, but says he was never abusive. Robinson testified that she suffers from anxiety and depression since quitting and hasn't worked in four years, despite applying for 638 different jobs. Hawaii Governor Josh Green announcing a $150 million recovery fund for Maui fire victims, but adding beneficiaries who participate in the program will have to waive their right to sue. This includes several parties currently being sued who are contributing to that fund. Police who sign, people who sign up for the voluntary fund could receive payments of more than $1 million by late spring. But some families want investigations finalized before signing away their rights, saying they won't be taking the hush money. And we're remembering one of NASA's best, Apollo astronaut Colonel Frank Borman. He died at the age of 95. He served as the commander of the Apollo 8, that mission was the mission to orbit the moon and return safely to Earth in 1968. He also is a veteran of Gemini 7, spending 14 days in low Earth orbit and conducting the first rendezvous in space. His missions helped to lay essential groundwork for the 1969 moon landing. It's incredible. I got a second chance at life. In hindsight, it just seems like I, I should have quit sooner. All right, that guy right there, that guy, they call him Double D Dave. I'll tell you why. To help save the life of this 34-year-old, he's been a smoker since the age of 21, some of the most skilled surgeons in Chicago used, you'll never guess it, breast implants. Oh, wow. Yeah, doctors needed the biggest thing that would fit in his chest cavities and buy him more time to qualify for a transplant, hence the Double Ds. Mm. They've nicknamed him Double D Davey, and he is grateful for his second chance at life. Wow. Isn't medicine incredible? Medicine, that, and the pig heart, all these different things that uh, technology has afforded surgeons to do to help, you know, extend people's lives. Yeah. Absolutely. And that they were surgeons here in Chicago. Absolutely. Who knew what to do. And uh, they said, let's get creative. How do we keep it open until we can get the organs that he needs? Wow. Thinking of him this morning. What a story. All right. Now to a surprising outcome from a study looking at combining different substances in order to get a good night's sleep. So specific, we've been talking about this one. Specifically, uh, we're talking about caffeine and alcohol. So separately, either could keep you up at night, but researchers now believe combining them might be the key. Wait, this this went opposite of what I thought this was going to do. Go. Yeah. <laughs> them together could be the key to falling asleep and staying asleep. For more on this, let's get to our Xavier Walton. Xavier, this is a potential breakthrough I never would have guessed in a million years. Marky, uh, yeah, I don't think the uh, researchers would have guessed it either. And the key word being uh, potential. Potential to somebody who really has uh, struggled to sleep. You know, I, I tested this out with my 10 cups of coffee yesterday. And then I had a, a glass of wine or two last night. And guess what? Slept pretty good. Those response effects. So Brilliant drink, minds from the University uh, of Washington and UC Berkeley believe they may have cracked the code to help get a better night's sleep. The combination might surprise you. I love seeing it. Caffeine and alcohol. Having both caffeine and alcohol on the same night had a mitigating effect on each other's negative effects on sleep. 
Their research revealed on average caffeine reduced sleep by 10 minutes per cup consumed the previous day. Same thing for alcohol consumption. Those who drank alcohol the day before reported a 4% decline per drink in their sleep quality. But that wasn't the case when the two were combined during the day than at night. Unlike what we had, we had predicted, it ended up being positive. Dr. Jill Wagner says that's just basic math. They counteracted each other. Historically, caffeine and alcohol have had negative impacts on someone's sleep. This research could be a game changer. This is the first known study to combine real world effects of alcohol and caffeine on nightly sleep quality and quantity. Independently, they uh, disrupt sleep. And so uh, it looks like that that was what they found out as well, is that independently they disrupted sleep. The caveat for this study was that they studied them together, which had never happened before. And Marky, you know, we should put a disclaimer on this store. We are not telling people, um, hey, yeah, drink a bunch of coffee late in the, late in the afternoon and then have, uh, you know, some wine or, or whatever you're drinking to balance it out so you get that good night's sleep. We're not saying that. This could be a breakthrough, <laughs> uh, but there definitely needs some more research. Uh, well, we can all go experiment for everybody this week. So, so Xavier, yes. should, for every <laughs> margarita I have, should I offset it instead with a glass of water, with a glass of joe instead? A cup of joe? Maybe. I'm going to say you got to space it out. You got to space it out. Also, you were talking earlier, espresso martinis really hot right now. Could be the solution. Could be the solution. There you go. Well, from that. my martini to yours, Xavier Walton, really interesting. Thanks so much. <laughs> oh, okay, cheers. Absolutely. You know, this is interesting, and I think people will be testing it out over the weekend. Yeah. Well, leaving behind pets has been especially difficult for people fleeing war zones in Israel. Now, one group is creating a glimmer of hope for those families in the darkest of times. Hello, I'm Captain Brooks Dunkroft from the 130th Airlift Wing, Charleston, West Virginia, and Air National Guard. And I'm Glenn Dunkroft, former Army infantryman. This is Hermes. And we want to give a big shout out to our favorite team. Go Jaguars! Go Jaguars, Duval! Happy Veterans Day. Happy Veterans Day. Struggling with the highs and lows of Bipolar 1? Ask about Braylar. Because you are greater than your Bipolar 1. And you can help take control of your symptoms with Raylar. Some medicines only treat the lows or highs. Raylar treats depressive, acute manic, and mixed episodes of Bipolar 1 in adults. Proven full-spectrum relief for all Bipolar 1 symptoms. And in Raylar clinical studies, most saw no substantial impact on weight. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor about unusual changes in behavior or suicidal thoughts. Antidepressants can increase these in children and young adults. Report fever, stiff muscles, or confusion, which may mean a life-threatening reaction, or uncontrollable muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death, weight gain, and high cholesterol may occur. Movement dysfunction and restlessness are common side effects. Sleepiness and stomach issues are also common. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. Ask about Raylar and learn how Abvi could help you save. Meet the traveling trio. The thrill seeker, the soul searcher, and ahoy, it's the explorer. Each helping to protect their money with Chase. Whoa, a lost card isn't keeping this thrill seeker down. Lost her card? Not the vibe. The soul searcher is finding his identity and helping to protect it. Oh yeah, the explorer. She's looking to dive deeper, all while Chase looks out for her. Because these friends have Chase. Alerts that help check, tools that help protect, one bank that puts you in control. Chase, make more of what's yours. I've never been healthier. Shingles doesn't care, but Shingrix protects. Proven over 90% effective, Shingrix is a vaccine used to prevent shingles in adults 50 years and older. Shingrix does not protect everyone and is not for those with severe allergic reactions to its ingredients or to a previous dose. An increased risk of Guillain-Barre syndrome was observed after getting Shingrix. Fainting can also happen. The most common side effects are pain, redness and swelling at the injection site, muscle pain, tiredness, headache, shivering, fever, and upset stomach. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about Shingrix today. I got a health plan not knowing that I was going to need it three months later. For $17 a month, my plan includes counseling, and it completely changed my life. I'm not on my parents' health insurance anymore, so I found a plan for just $34 a month. Signing up was so easy, it only took me 30 minutes to find a plan for $13 a month. All plans cover doctor visits, prescriptions, emergency care, and more. Healthcare.gov is here for you. Enroll by December 15th. I have type 2 diabetes, but I manage it well. It's a little pill with a big story to tell. I take once daily, Jardians. 
Christmas. Guardians works 24-7 in your body to flush out some sugar. And for adults with type 2 diabetes and known heart disease, Jardians can lower the risk of cardiovascular death, too. Jardians may cause serious side effects, including ketoacidosis that may be fatal, dehydration that can lead to a sudden worsening of kidney function, and general yeast or urinary tract infections. A rare life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Jardians and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this infection, ketoacidosis, or an allergic reaction, and don't take it if you're on dialysis. Taking Jardians with the sulfonylurea or insulin may cause low blood sugar. Jardians. Welcome back to Morning in America. When Hamas terrorists breached Israel's border on October 7, thousands had to flee their homes, some forced to leave behind their pets. In the wake of the tragedy, Dogs and Heroes was created with volunteers conducting rescues in locations that just days before were the sites of horrific terror attacks. And it's not just dogs. The organization has found cats, parakeets, and even tarantulas, as well as goats and other livestock. Since this effort started just over a month ago, hundreds of animals have been rescued in Israel with several families reunited with their beloved pets. Joining us now is veterinary Dr. Shira Yashfe, co-founder of Dogs and Heroes. Dr. Yashfe, I want to thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. I Sorry understand. For the <laughs> exactly. No, that's fine. In fact, I was just about to let viewers know, I understand you're in a very active situation that you can even still possibly hear alarms in the background. We just had one two minutes ago. That's why I had to run, and I wasn't sure I'll even make the interview. Yeah, we're well, in the shelter. Well, Dr. Yashve, I want to make the most of your time, and once again, thank you for joining us. Can you tell us why this mission is so important? Can you take us back to October 7th, and uh, you, you can see what's happening to your country at the hands of Hamas. At that time, at that day, you said, you know what, we need to do something because we can see that a, a part of people's families uh, is suffering, is missing. Yeah, so... <laughs> I think always the sentence, take me back to October 7th, is the hard one, so I'll take a second. But um, basically what happened is that on October 7th, uh, we all woke up, right? It started 6.30 a.m. We woke up from phone calls of family, friends. For me, it was my mother saying something is happening. Um, it wasn't clear for us yet what was happening and how we're going to react, but me and a couple of friends started talking, and I'm a veterinary doctor. Others are, you know, animal lovers, and... They have their own pets, and we realized that probably animals would have their needs um, related to this. We, at the beginning, we thought we we're just going to, from our apartments in Tel Aviv, do a few calls to make sure that uh, people that are going into the reserves or um, fleeing their homes would have a dog, a foster care for their dog. Um, but then we realized very quickly, within like 48 hours, that we need to go down south, uh, start an operation room right outside of the of the um, war area, the attacked area, and start to extract dogs actively from there alongside missions to extract humans um, outside of that area. So yeah, it was a very spontaneous um, activity by and, me and my friends. And Dr. Yashve, even when you're doing this, you're realizing that, wow, it's more than just dogs, it's also cats. We need to, in some instances, render medical uh, assistance and then also try to de-stress some of these animals, yes? Right, and um, the interesting part is the cat, because basically I was the only veterinarian on our um, kind of friends group. Um, so I naturally went into the into the thinking of how are we going to attend to all the medical um, situations that we're going to see with these animals. Uh, I was expecting, and in that operations room that we created, again, within maybe 48, 72 hours, I called all my veterinary friends and everything. We actually created there like a field hospital for animals. And we were expecting to see a lot of injuries and a lot of animals in very bad conditions. We were very surprised to see that there, there were none or there were very, maybe 5% were injured. Um, it took me a while, but after five, five, six days, I realized that it's a bias, that the ones there were many, many, many animals shot and the ones that had really bad injuries, our teams weren't able to find them because they were hiding, et cetera, mm -hmm. because my, my teams were under fire, active fire. So we got the ones that were in good health. So it was a bit of a bias. Um, yeah, and we're now seeing a few of the very injured ones that need surgeries and stuff that survived a couple of weeks hidden and finally we can get to them. 
Dr. Yashri, there are a number of needs right now in the area because we know that there are so many different things happening all at once. I know that you want attention on the program. You're in control of rescue missions for this newly created organization. What do you want people at home to know and what can people do? Um, I think when, yeah, messages to the world right now, <laughs> I have many, but if we'll keep it to the dogs and cats, I would say that um, it's just important to understand that the 7th of October, which actually was 7, 8, 9th, right? It was an ongoing horror story, did not end for us. It's an ongoing, it's one long, hor horrible day. And also for these animals, some are still in hiding, right, and waiting for us. Um, or need long-term support. Now under all the operations from Together rescued around 900,000 animals, um, just pets, not even the goats and everything. So now under our specific care, we have about 400 of those and they need support because the families are either murdered, kidnapped. Uh, we're now doing investigations to figure out, you know, how to understand even whose families, whose dog, because not all of them were microchipped. Um, so I think we just need uh, people's yeah, support to understand that there's now a crisis here, obviously humanitarian and also in the animal level, and that this is an ongoing, it's an, it's an ongoing situation. We're in the trauma still trying to pick up the pieces and pieces keep breaking. Dr. Sherry um, Yashfei, thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. We will follow up with you again and continue the good work that you're doing. Our prayers are definitely with you and everyone working to keep everyone safe. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thank goodness for people like her. You know, the focus, rightfully so, has been on humans and families, but these pets are our families, too. They Absolutely. become our family members, too. It makes you sick. And I did also want to add on, you know, you had talked to her right off the top about the alarm she was hearing. She had just taken shelter. Our own correspondent, Robert Sherman, just emailed our team from a bunker. He and his wow. producer there. And he said, uh, you know, it's worth noting that in the wake of the Israelis agreeing to four-hour pauses in Gaza, one of the largest rocket barrages just came our way. Um, they said we heard at least a dozen explosions overhead. Um, this in the midst of that humanitarian corridor being open. Which they have taken aim. Reminds you the danger remains. Yes. And this is something that we know will be top of mind when we host that next Republican debate. Yes. In fact, News Nation's Elizabeth Vargas talks exclusively with journalist Megan Kelly about this week's GOP debate. And what Kelly thinks happened with Ohio passing the abortion measure, which two candidates stood out, and what challenges they face to secure the GOP nomination. My name's Eric. I am 39 years old. I've started thinking about getting Botox Cosmetic for the last couple of years. I just see myself on uh, video calls all day, and I really start noticing the lines. I'm still Eric, and I got Botox Cosmetic. I'm seeing a lot less prominent lines than I did before. The results have been subtle but noticeable. Botox Cosmetic is FDA approved to temporarily make frown lines, crow's feet, and forehead lines look better. The effects of Botox Cosmetic may spread hours to weeks after injection, causing serious symptoms. Alert your doctor right away as difficulty swallowing, speaking, breathing, eye problems, or muscle weakness may be a sign of a life-threatening condition. Do not receive Botox Cosmetic if you have a skin infection. Side effects may include allergic reactions, injection site pain, headache, eyebrow, eyelid drooping, and eyelid swelling. Tell your doctor about your medical history, muscle or nerve conditions, and medications including botulinum toxins as these may increase the risk of serious side effects. See for yourself at BotoxCosmetic.com. Consumer Cellular, this is Sam. How may I help you? This is Sam. How may I help you? Oh, this is a butt dial. Well, somebody's butt. Just thought I'd let you know that with Consumer Cellular, you can get the same exact coverage as the leading carriers, but for up to half the price. I can get behind that. I know, right? I just talked to a butt. Congrats. My mom's Alzheimer's never changed how much we love her, but it did change her. She developed agitation that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. She started yelling, pacing around, kept repeating the same questions. She got agitated often, so we asked her doctor for help. Rick Zolti is the only FDA-approved medication proven to reduce agitation symptoms that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. Rick Zolti can cause serious side effects. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Report fever, stiff muscles, and confusion, which can be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death. 
weight gain, increased cholesterol, low white blood cells, unusual urges, dizziness on standing, falls, seizures, trouble swallowing or sleepiness may occur. Take action for your loved one. Ask their doctor about Rexulti. Get help reaching your goals with J.P. Morgan Wealth Plan, the digital money coach in the Chase mobile app. Use it to set and track your goals, big and small, and see how changes you make today could help put them within reach. From your first big move to retiring poolside and the other goals along the way, Wealth Plan can help you get there. J.P. Morgan Wealth Management. Attention, former Marines and family members stationed at Camp Lejeune. If you lived or worked at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina for at least 30 days from August 1953 through December 1987 and have been diagnosed with cancer, neurobehavioral effects, had a child born with birth defects, were diagnosed with fertility issues or more, you may qualify for significant financial compensation. Call Saddle Rock Legal Group now to discuss your case. It has been proven that the water at Camp Lejeune during those years was extremely contaminated with toxic chemicals. A new law passed by Congress now allows veterans and their surviving family members to bring lawsuits and potentially recover damages for harm from exposure to contaminated water at Camp Lejeune. Don't wait until it's too late. It only takes a few minutes and the call is completely free. Call Saddle Rock Legal Group to discuss your case now. Call 1-800-773-6677. That's 1-800-773-6677. Our own Elizabeth Barker spoke exclusively with journalist Megyn Kelly to discuss their roles as co-moderators of the upcoming Republican presidential primary debate airing right here on News Nation. And they really covered the gamut when they talked topics spanning from three inch high shoes, which we heard about in the debate this week, to the Actually, issue they're one. Actually, five because uh, they're... they're made for running. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Thank you for the clarification. <laughs> uh, they also talked about the issue one abortion measure passing in Ohio to Colorado trying to get President Trump off the ballot for the general election and how that could affect other swing states. Take a listen. Do you think any of them will be able in our fourth debate that you and I hope to get them actually debating a little bit more than they have been in the first three debates, talking, uh, you know, with each other about their beliefs in a way that doesn't involve digs about their kids? Um, do you think that they have any of them can make any headway when it comes to chipping down that lead? Because, Megan, we know from the polling that was out in The New York Times this week that Republican voters are saying, right now, I want to vote for Donald Trump. but. If he's convicted of anything, I want to vote for somebody else. We also know from polling, widespread polling, that most American voters don't want either of these candidates, Donald Trump or Joe Biden, on the ballot. Yeah. So that and seems to some... leave it seems to leave an opportunity for somebody to be ready and waiting in the wings and and biding their time until the moment happens. Look, I do think that if the remaining candidates got together and said we're all going to bail out and we're get we're going to get behind DeSantis or we're going to get behind Haley, that could, that could have an impact. And then it would be a real horse race. That's, this has been the truth all along. But who's going to go? Yeah. Nikki and Haley are in, uh, Nikki Haley and DeSantis are in a death match right now. Try convincing one of them that they should be the one to bail. Vivek is there apparently as a Trump spoiler. So he's certainly not pulling out, though he doesn't have meaningful polls anyway. But I'll tell you another reason why it's important, even if they, if, if they can't do it, even if it remains a divided field that, that is to Trump's benefit. There is a trial underway right now in Colorado trying to get Trump off the ballot in, in the general election because under the 14th Amendment, they're alleging he can't be on the ballot because he's an alleged insurrectionist. There are several other swing states that will follow if Colorado gets a ruling saying he cannot be on the ballot. Like, it actually could lead to some serious problems for, for, any, for Rep Republicans who want to see Trump elected. Right. Now, the odds of this are extremely long, but they're there. And They're so there. if Trump actually did get bounced off the ballot in Colorado and a couple of other sp uh, swing states, th these, these debates are going to matter a whole lot more. Oh, these debates yeah, are definitely going to matter. Absolutely. The fourth Republican primary debate set for 8 p.m. Eastern right here on December 6th, moderated by News Nation's Elizabeth Vargas and Sirius XM's Megyn Kelly in partnership with The Washington Free Beacon.
Well, four American cowboys are in the West Bank, and they're sticking out, too, like a sore thumb. You know they are. They're helping Jewish settlers with their land, and they join us live with what inspired their mission to go there in the first place. All right, guys, you remember this wild brawl that went viral this past summer? Yeah, that happened there in Alabama, right? Remember that? Well, the charges for this case is someone you might not expect. Hi, my name is Petty Officer Jacob Harrington here at Fleet Logistics Support Squadron 57, and I'd like to shout out to my family and friends back home in Arkansas. Happy Veterans Day. In this market, you'll find Fisher Investments is different than other money managers. Different how? Aren't we all just looking for the hottest stocks? Nope. We use diversified strategies to position our clients' portfolios for their long-term goals. But you still sell investments that generate high commissions for you, right? No, we don't sell commission products. We're a fiduciary obligated to act in our client's best interest. So when do you make more money? Only when your clients make more money? Yep, we do better when our clients do better. At Fisher Investments, we're clearly different. If you have chronic kidney disease, you can reduce the risk of kidney failure with Parsega because there are places you'd rather be. Parsega can cause serious side effects, including ketoacidosis that may be fatal, dehydration, urinary tract or genital yeast infections, and low blood sugar. A rare life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Farsica and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this infection, an allergic reaction, or ketoacidosis. Farsica. With moderate to severe plaque psoriasis, my skin was no longer mine. My active psoriatic arthritis joint symptoms held me back. Don't let symptoms define you. Emerge as you. With Tremvia, most people saw 90% clearer skin at four months, and the majority stayed clearer at five years. Tremvia is proven to significantly reduce joint pain, stiffness, and swelling. It's just six doses a year after two starter doses. Serious allergic reactions may occur. Tremvia may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, or if you had a vaccine or plan to. Emerge as you. Emerge Tremfiant. Ask your doctor about Tremfia. If your thyroid eye disease was diagnosed a long, long time ago, you may think your eyes will be bulging forever. Like a never-ending curse that can't be broken. But even if you've been told it's too late, treating your thyroid eye disease may still be possible and a new day is within sight. Learn how you could give your eyes a fresh start at stilltreatted.com. We come from people we can be proud of. Seeing all the places I come from, I know. If it's a Serrano, it's something to be proud of. Give the gift of family heritage with ancestry. For your husband, iPhone 15 Pro. Carolers, to tell me you want a new iPhone, a better plan is Verizon. No way they take this wreck. Yes, they will, and you'll get iPhone 15 Pro and Apple TV 4K and Apple One, all three on them. Do that. We tried to tell him, but he paid us a lot. It was a lot. This holiday, turn any iPhone in any condition into a new iPhone 15 Pro with titanium, Apple TV 4K, and six months of Apple One. All three on us. It's holiday every day with Verizon. My name's Dan. I live here in San Antonio, Texas. My wife Magda and I have been married for 39 years. About three or four years ago, I wasn't feeling as if I was as sharp as I used to be. I wanted to try something that was over the counter. I saw the Prevagen commercials. After a short amount of time taking Prevagen, I started noticing a difference. Then I'm remembering this and remembering that. I stopped taking Prevagen and I found myself slacking back, so I jumped right back on it. I feel as if it's brought me back to the good old days. Prevagen, at stores everywhere without a prescription. Happy Friday, everybody. We have made it and we have had an action packed week right here on Morning in America from your one on one sit down yeah. with the Fawns. That was awesome. Henry Winkler uh, to announcing right here on News Nation that we will be hosting the next Republican primary debate. Absolutely. We want to take people, if you missed some of it, here's a look back at some of the fun that you may have missed while watching and making breakfast. Tune in, Morning in America. I'm here. You'll be there. We'll have coffee together. Love the fawns. That just warmed my heart. I think that Waffle House should name a dish after y'all after this. You need to have a Waffle House reception one day. Where would yours be? Waffle I'm going to plead the fifth. 
that was a reindeer. I have every reason to believe that <laughs> Mariah Carey is behind that, pushing yeah. her whole Christmas agenda. We're just two days away from the third Republican primary debate. This one's going to go down in Miami. We're headed to Miami. <laughs> Adrian, so it's, it goes like this. Welcome to Miami. <laughs> News Nation will host the next Republican presidential debate. Here, what music genre or favorite song even helps you get out of a funk? Michael Jackson, PYT. Oh, I love song. Song. Okay, okay, so Kelsey. mine is Higher Love by Whitney oh, Houston. Really? It was remixed by Kygo. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Absolute Vodka and Kahlua Coffee Liqueur teamed up with imaginary authors Perfumery to spread some cocktail cheer. Do I want to smell like a drink? Can't Do I want to make people thirsty when I walk in a room? I yeah. eat more pickles than anybody you've ever met. I don't like things that taste like other things. You just want the pickle. I just want the pickle, <laughs> and then I want the ketchup on the oh, side, and then I want the yeah. popcorn in the bowl. So weird calling a guy the sexiest man alive. Why? I don't know. It's just weird. Celebrate it. Go on with your bad self. <laughs> Shout out to a fellow 57-year-old who still got it. You're right. I love when men wear denim. Oh, yeah. There and pink. Go. And pink. Oh, Should be. Hey, hey. Yeah. Can, we can send <laughs> your picture in for next year as he walks off before he starts blushing. Oh, my gosh. It's been it all. It's my favorite part of the week to look back Absolutely. and see what we've done. And people don't understand it. We really do have a lot of fun. We definitely try to make sure that we're always delivering the news. But sure. we have a lot of fun off camera, behind the scenes, and people don't always get a chance to see it all. So yeah. It's just a good time. Yeah. Sharing that. It was a great week. Hope you've had one, too. Thanks for coming along with us. And we have more news for All America coming up. There will be uh, two humanitarian corridors allowing people to flee the areas of hostility.